Okay guys, so we're gonna go for the second part of the yep, video. Part two. Part two. Well, what you got for that film? Okay, so what we left off last was, you know, the knives and things like that. So we're gonna go through a couple of the uh, different accessories and the liquid freakiness, the new high temperature or extreme environment lube and protective we've got. Uh, so first of all, I wanna show you guys real quick. So Chris just ran outside and these are our glow in the dark handles. Really kind of cool. Um, I'm not sure, Chris, can you, no. Maybe not. So at any rate, we'll throw a link or something because he walked around the other side mm -hmm. of the camera. Um, so these guys are really neat. Now, I've had some pushback when I first you know, put them out. They're a limited edition product, so we don't always have them in stock. Mm -hmm. But because we've standardized our handles, you can unbolt the handle yourself, buy a new set of grips, whether they're the OD mm -hmm. canvas or the glow in the dark or the Kira Knight handles, and you can bolt them right onto the knife yourself and you're done. So you can change the look and feel of your knife based on what you're doing. So the whole idea of this is that this guy needed to be used for survival, bush pilots, mm -hmm. uh, real expedition work. So when you're in the woods and you drop your knife, you know, you can find it. So camping, a lot of people like that because they can you know, stick that next mm -hmm. to the campfire or whatever and uh, you know, they'll always see it. Okay, guys use them as a tent peg, you know, one part that everyone keeps tripping so they'll take the knife and drive it into the ground and then it's a glow in the dark. You know, think, oh, I'm gonna make a trip on that, that type of thing. Um, so that's that's kind of really fun. Uh, those are both for the cholera and the talon, uh, intermittently, sporadically. Gotcha. Um, so there's that. Here's a really cool one. This is Kiranite. It's orange Kiranite. I think it's toxic orange or something. So we do a matching bone bead, and I'll show you the rest of those here. Uh, but this is more for like deer hunting and you know guide work or mm -hmm. something like that. So you can kind of dress up your knife. You can send it through the custom shop. Or you can just click the link on our website and under the knife and tool, you'll see that there's a custom shop there. And you'll see like our uh, our big flame series knife and things like that. So that's in there. That's so, a, that looks good if you remember one of those Rock of Glen Glen in the 80s, you know. Like, <laughs> <looking> <laughs> with your yeah, with your parachute <laughs> pants and your, and your mullet. Yeah, there we go, baby. So speaking of the uh, custom shop, this was our first custom knife. This was the Mark mm -hmm. I platform. And this is my my personal knife. So uh, they were all hand welted leather sheaths and it was really cool because I, I called, well here, I'll just show you this. It's uh, it's titanium nitride mm -hmm. and uh, it's the cholera. Again, this is the Mark I, so there's a false edge on it. And it's a 1095 knife, okay? So that's where we started and we ultimately went to stainless steel because of corrosion okay. properties and we could squeeze some more steel, you know, some more properties out of the steel. So what's really cool about this is that this particular coating is from the same contractor who did all the coatings on the Mars rover. So oh, wow. this is yeah. So this is Mars 101 right here, baby. So we called NASA and we said, hey, can we put you know NASA approved you know the logo mm -hmm. or whatever the Maven project or anything like that? And they were like very adamant, no, hell no. But anyway, how did you ever figure that out? And I'm like, dude, there's only like three dudes in the yeah, country right. that can do it, right? So you go down the list and you find somebody that's got the NASA certification. I uh, happen to be here, uh, pretty local in Chicago. So that's what we did. So we used a real, real NASA coating. This isn't like, I can't stress it enough. That's what really made this unique, was that this was the real coating that they put on the Mars rover. It's pretty random. You know? So it's a, it's a lot of fun. So if you ever want to go stab some alien ass, you know, going, to, going into outer space, that's what you're going to carry. You're going to use a clean dependent day. Exactly, right? <laughs> so we used a, a linen micarta again, but it looks like ivory. So this is the antique and uh, of course some bone beads. And that's what we're going to go into now. So it's a really kind of a, a cool product and that was our first limited edition knife. So every about year and a half mm -hmm. we release a new limited edition. Gotcha. Uh, and limited knives, you know, there might be, you know, 50. There might only be 10. Depends on how much time and effort we've got into it and how long it takes to get all the pieces and parts together. How the shop is moving, uh, but that leads us to our, the beads. Yes. So these are pretty. These are really kind of cool. Um, 
they're lanyards that we make to go corresponding to the knife. So you'll slide that through the hole and just kind of slip knot it real quick. And you can get all these different colors and things like that to match the knife. But they really came from a trade bead thing that I was getting from the trackers in Africa. So I grew up as a big game hunter or in a big game hunting family. And uh, so when I was when I was hunting, the trackers would give you a bone bead or a trade bead to kind of signal or signify that you're not some crazy dentist trying to shoot a lion. And, you know, yeah. that kind of, you're a real hunter. You care about them. You respect them. And because a lot of a lot of that still goes on. There's there's not a whole lot of real real respect. So this would be hanging off my knife or hanging off the front of my double rifle and things like that. And then people would see it and be like, oh. You know, the trackers would see him and be like, oh, he's a, he's a real hunter. Gotcha. Um, so that's just a carryover product. And ultimately, you know, we, we use them for keys, you know, for lanyards. Uh, we do a couple others. I think I did, I did something different with this, just some knot work. Mm -hmm. So those are my shop keys. I put them on a carabiner like that. So you can do that kind of stuff with them as well. But they come in all different types of colors and, you know, variations. Every once in a while, you'll see some pop up on the, uh, on the custom shop side. They're really cool. I think we sold out of all of the things. So when we went to Blade Show, yeah, we sold out of them. So we have made some articulated beads like this guy here. And uh, it was really, really kind of fun. So we had a couple of these guys with a big ball in the middle mm -hmm. of it and you could articulate the bead. Oh, cool. So we sold out of those like that fast. But ultimately they're just like an EDC pull. You yeah. put on your backpack or whatever. It's just something not, you know, machined metal. These are all hand carved bone. So uh, they do come from Africa. So this is one of those things that we source out of out of country. But I definitely wouldn't, you know, like stick this in your mouth or you know suck on it. You might find yourself with Ebola or something, you know, horrible like that. Uh, <laughs> but they are all handmade. Uh, so the variations in color and things like that. And it's really kind of a fun, really kind of a fun thing. Cool. Um, they are stabilized, so you don't have to worry about them cracking. We use the same, uh, we same that we use the same glue that uh, NASA uses to hold the space shuttle together. Oh, okay. So once again, there are we back in the aerospace division or industries where you know we're using some high tech stuff. The glue that I would use on my custom knives when I was building those, uh, we didn't use any pins or anything like that. We didn't need to. My handles were laminated to the steel with yeah. like this wicked, wicked you know, space grade urethane glue epoxy and man, you'd beat it all day long with a sledgehammer. It was not coming off that knife. So it was kind of neat because there was no, there's no nuts or bolts mm -hmm. or anything around it. So well, the cool feature is also if you, it's a good excuse. You can get one for your, you know, if you buy one of these knives, you can get one for your wife. You go home, you're like, hey, look, I got a present for you too. You know? Yeah, there you go. You know, look, I got you a new keychain. Yeah, my senior day. Maybe. Yeah. But, um, so here it is, liquid freakiness. So like I was talking about in the uh, first video with the naming of the different knives, mm -hmm. uh, we definitely have a lot of fun with, uh, with naming the product. So I'm sitting around and this took me about six months to really develop and fine tune the formulation. So it's a proprietary blend. It's a fully synthetic product. So it's got no color, uh, it's got no odor, and it's got no taste. Don't ask me why I know that, but it's, it says right here, do not take internally. So okay. you shouldn't. Like, ah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you don't want to be doing that or you so you're using mean, it for the freaky. Oh, no, yeah. no, no. This is a it's a high protectant, extreme environment, lube and protectant. So when you say lube <laughs> So when you say lube, it's not for that. It's for guns and bows and equipment. And if you're one of those greasy dagos like <laughs> <laughs> you can probably you can ring it you out. Comb your hair a little bit with that too. I'm pretty sure my boy. A little bit of hair tonic. Yeah, I mean, the first impression. I'm not an expert, and I, you know, I'm pretty attached to my product that I use normally. Yeah. But the first impression when, when I ask you and you let me touch it, I'm like, that that's what I told you. Yeah, like, that's the that's how I came up with the name. Because it's, so as we're going along, we finally get to the end formulation. I stick it on my fingers. I'm like. Wow, that's freaky. Because mm -hmm. it's not like sticky. Yeah, it's not tacky. Slimy or it's slimy. It's not slimy. It's just like very, very natural. That's a natural feeling, and it's fully synthetic, right? So it's non-toxic. Backs of my hands are scarred up from the product that mm -hmm. we used to use back here. Oh yeah, quite a the bit. chemicals here. Yeah, because the chemicals in it will just tear your hands apart. And because we're working so fast sometimes to meet deadlines or production schedules, mm -hmm. that you know you don't put your gloves on all the time. Mm -hmm. No. So the really cool thing about this is it's non-toxic. Uh, it's eco-friendly, so if this gets into the water supply, no harm, no foul. 
there are other products out there, and I'm, I'm not going to name any names because that's kind mm -hmm. of uncool. I mean, hey, look, we're all trying to do the same thing yeah, here, right? Yeah, it's a big market. It's a big market, so, but at any rate, their product goes into the water supply and it's not good. It's li literally labeled in, you know, in the, mm -hmm. uh, in the sheets that, no, it's not supposed to hit the water supply. This is okay to go into the water. So this is eco-friendly. So if you're like a duck hunter and you're in the water all the time, this is the perfect oil because gotcha. it's negative 65 all the way to 540. So you need so, it in every field. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, so if the gun gets wet and you're not putting oil back into the environment that you're supposed to be protecting the wetlands and you water farms. It's easy to clean if you spill it too. So yeah, it's, it's very like easy. It. Um, and, you know, like I said, it, it's really freaky. So when you put this stuff and you get a little bit on your finger, it really is, it is freaky. I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, it's liquid freaky. So that's, so that's how the name came. That being said, no other less, no easy to clean. So if you if you are one of those lazy guys, meanwhile he's reading one of those uh, Chef Boyardee beef and you clean his gun in the living room, <laughs> uh, and your, your wife come back almost like, you what know, does it smell? Know, what does it smell? Did you clean the guns in the living room again? <laughs> like, and you, you use this stuff, yeah. and you can probably hide it from there. I mean, it's it's um, you know it's it's I think there is a there is a big market for a gun cleaner. Let me say that, okay, yeah. if I can. But there is a bunch of product, you know, mention it for there, a yeah. big name and everything. And I don't think for the price range, which is an important thing. It's very you know important. I mean? Yeah. Price and important. quality. And quality. I clean a bunch of my guns. I clean my guns every week, every two or every week. Actually. I think I clean mine every decade. Oh well, well, you know, that's 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 a problem. I can find my job too sometimes. <laughs> I got some customers. Well, well, what I'm saying is, you know, it's I use a lot of it. Yeah. So I normally I learned my lesson. I start buying the six, you know, the, the, the twenty, yeah. Yeah. sixteen ounces or bigger, you know, because yeah. it's it's normal, you know. And I'm assuming like look at the consistency. If you are only like a bulk carrier or something, like that, you're gonna need like a two drops. That's what I'm saying. Two drops. Actually, the best thing to do is put a little bit on a Q-tip. Okay. Okay. Run the outside of the bulk carrier. Drop it in. A brush, maybe. Something like that. You could use a brush if you want. You know, you just unscrew the cap, dip a little paintbrush in there. Paint the inside, paint the outside, your bolt carrier, you know, where actually the bolt yeah. face rotates in and out of the carrier. Oh, yeah. You know, and just boom, that's Fire it. That's all you need. Bit, yeah, exactly. Are you guys gonna, that's, that's what you were explaining me before. That's the first product that you're coming out. Then you're gonna make also a cleaner. And yeah, we've got a cleaner coming out. So by the time everyone kind of gets ready for this video and kind of like to digest all this stuff, that cleaner is gonna be on the market. Oh. So there's gonna be three products actually. So you're gonna have the, uh, the lube and protectant, mm -hmm. and then you've got a bottle of cleaner, and then you've got a field kit. So the field kit's kind of cool because it comes in that big Ziploc bag mm -hmm. that I showed you, mm -hmm. right? So you'll get uh, two ounces of clean, uh, two ounces of oil, four ounces of cleaner, okay, okay, which you don't need much of because it's, it's really nice, yeah. and um, uh, ten black swabs, okay, and then a double-ended brush, you know, oh, gun brush, yeah, 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 exactly, and then uh, you get a small you know, red microfiber cloth. And of course you get a sticker and some swag. Okay, it's always good. It's always good, yeah. Okay. I mean, what the, you have to put that vulture sticker everywhere. Like we stick might, it on your, oh no, she'd probably get mad about that. We might, I might end up actually, <laughs> <laughs> I might end up testing actually a little bit of that on my future test on the nine millimeter you guys saw. I want to actually give it a try because like I said, I'm sound like St. Thomas. I want to put the finger and <laughs> I, I, I don't trust until I touch the, you know, the thing, but um, you'll have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I want to drop a couple of magazine mix, you know, aluminum, brass, and steel yeah. case. I want to see how easy because steel case is kind of a bitch to, to clean. Yeah, you know, so that would be probably it's my, really my point of view, my best way, the best way, sorry for, for right. testing out. So most of the time, our cleaner is really cool too because it's not it's a fully synthetic product coming too. So it's also eco friendly, non toxic or low toxicity, I should say, and it's got no carcinogenics. You know, okay. Whatsoever. So yeah, most cleaners cool. are really toxic, oh, yeah. and they got carcinogenics in them. Like it's just bad stuff. I mean, oh, yeah. that's what's some, normally some, in a gun cleaner. Some stuff. You might have to hit a couple spots a little bit more, you know, because it's not that aggressive. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's nitrile safe. Yeah, it's paint safe. This is paint safe and Cerakote safe, gasket safe, rubber safe. I mean, like good lord. We've even got you know anti corrosion and rust inhibitors inside the oil, okay. along with a carrier agent, which is really kind of fun. What it does is it allows us to maintain a little bit more lubricity mm -hmm. under pressure. So if you know anything about lubricants, they break down under pressure pretty fast. And that's where you're gonna get your friction, that's where you're gonna get your heat. So with being at oh, over 500 degrees before smoke point, 
uh, we're maintaining that lubricity. Plus, we've got the carrier agent mm -hmm. in there to add a little bit more lubricity. So that's why it's so. so you feel you probably still feel it on your fingers. It's still yeah, freaky. It's, it's still actually, I was. He wants to hand me a, a paper towel. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna actually. <laughs> I mean, it's weird, you know, some cleaners like you, like, uh, I'm again, don't mention the name. Waxy. Like, yeah, kind of bad, your gun looks so, mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's easy to, again, it's probably easy to, yep. to apply and, and whatever. So. Unlike some of the other guys that have got, you know, extreme, you know, temperature stuff, this one's really safe. I mean, right, it's, cool. it, it's really safe. Because that was one of the first things that, while I was divining, mm -hmm. devising this, I said, I've got to be able to run up my guns, I've got to be able to use it on my knives, I want to be able to keep my linen and my car looking black, so I'm going to put a little bit of oil on it. And I want to make sure that it's not going to tear apart my hands anymore. Yeah. I'm, I'm tired, you know. I'm, I'm like in my 40s, and I'm just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm screwed up now for life. Yeah. So I mean, that's kind of important. You, you see the guys, the old hunters and the old shooters. They're deaf. They're like, what? They're like a stump. You know, it's like talking to a tree. Well, now everyone's into the, you know, real cool hearing yeah. protection, right? Yeah, right? Well, I think this is the next step. I mean, everyone's got to be into some really nice, eco-friendly products. When it, they're eco-friendly, all right. So if you're not a tree hugger, do you like your own skin? Mm -hmm. You like not picking, you know, cancer scabs off the back of your hands or whatever. That's that's pretty important. Boy, oh, if, if you're like a uh, you're a child of a yeah. of a pet, yeah, and you're afraid that it's gonna touch or get yeah. in contact with this stuff. You mm -hmm. pretty much can't leave it on the bench. I mean, even if a kid reach out of it, it won't be. Well, you definitely want to keep it out of the reach of kids because I mean, it's it's liquidy and it's yeah, so no, it's not liquid. If you touch it, you know, yeah, if, if they get it out of their hands, they're not really gonna start like screaming and burning and that type of thing. You know, yeah. You're gonna have a lot of fun with it. We've had a couple guys test it outside of you know what I do with it, mm -hmm. and uh, they had some problem. 1911s that had the 22 yeah, yeah, versions, yeah. two drops, one on each rail, rack, 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 bup, 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 and just perfect. They're like, oh my god, this this gun hasn't run this great ever since I bought it. And then another guy at uh, so there's been like three major mm -hmm. manufacturers and a couple other knife builders that picked this up right away at Blade oh, Show. Wow, okay. So I mean they they tested it right there at Blade and they're like, wow, for their folders. It's like, or they're out the front, like heretic. If you guys can check out uh, Tony Marfioni's kid is uh, TJ. He's got a knife company by the name of Heretic, and uh, Heretic knives, and it's high end, wicked out the front stilettos. I can't, I can't afford it. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still trying to pay off, you know, my machinery and stuff. But he took some, threw it in there, mm -hmm. and he's like, Psh, oh my god, that's fast. A couple other guys took it on their big. Uh, I, I can't say. The complete name of the mm -hmm. knife because it's just not cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but they bought a high-end CR folding knife, right, a pocket knife, and it never really worked. And the guy's a knife maker, right, so he knows how to work on stuff. And he took the knife apart and he's polished and honed everything and lapped everything, and it still won't flip open with it being horizontal gotcha. and coming up. One drop of this, poof, poof. he's like, oh my god, poof. he's walking around everywhere and he's going nuts. And it's the kid from Vehement Knives, Mark, okay. uh, and he's like, bing, bing, bing. He's like, this is awesome. So. It works really nice and well uh, for a lot of different things. Locks, you know, if you're on a trailer or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, the ball head, because it's got the lubricity yeah. carrier agent in there, it won't break down under the pressure. So we've tested it on our trailer for our trade show trailer because it just sits out in the weather oh, all yeah. day long, right? Inges, whatever, you know. Yeah. So it's really kind of a fun product. It is, you know, it's 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 a little bit more expensive than you know, rem oil, which you know has, has been like the industry go to mm -hmm. for many many years. It is more expensive. It's fifteen dollars for. For a two ounce bottle, but like you said, it only takes you know one drop, and so it'll last you a long time. Are you planning to make a bigger version of that? Just yeah, yeah, we can we can custom manufacture it to you know bigger bottles if you want. Our cleaner is going to start in a four ounce because it fits inside the field kit, and it's kind of important so that you can take it and stuff it in your day yeah. bag, mm -hmm. right? So it's only it's a field kit about this big, and it's okay. soft and it's poly bag, really heavy duty mylar bag, cool. um, and that'll probably be in like a sixteen ounce or twenty ounce, you know, mega spray. Okay. Okay. What you got next? Uh, I think that's it, man. That's it. You yeah. Show? Well, you want to go through the fire starter? Yeah. Why not? You got time, right, guys? So why don't we go ahead and I'm gonna close up the video. Uh, thank you very much again, by the way. You're very welcome. You're gonna show super quick the. Um... Yeah, the fire starter. Yeah. Sure. Cool. All right. Let's do All it. Right. See you guys in a minute.